Hello, everyone, and welcome back once again to the Bible. Each week, we read out one chapter of the Book of Acts. This week, it's Acts 25. If you aren't interested in the Bible, that's absolutely okay. That's your call, and I hope you have a nice life. But if you are interested in this, then go ahead and listen on because we're going to get right into the meat of it now. Acts 25. Three days after Festus arrived in Caesarea to take over his new responsibilities, he left for Jerusalem, where the chief priests and other Jewish leaders got hold of him and gave him their story about Paul. They begged him to bring Paul to Jerusalem at once. Their plan, after all, was to waylay and kill him. But Festus replied that since Paul was at Caesarea and he himself was returning there soon, those of authority in this affair should return with him for the trial. Eight or ten days later, he returned to Caesarea, and the following day opened Paul's trial. On Paul's arrival in court, the Jews from Jerusalem gathered around, hurling many serious accusations which they couldn't prove. Paul denied the charges. I am not guilty, he said. I have not oppressed the Jewish laws or desecrated the temple or rebelled against the Roman government. Then Festus, anxious to please the Jews, asked him, Are you willing to go to Jerusalem and to stand trial before me? But Paul replied, No, I demand my privilege of a hearing before the emperor himself. You know very well I am not guilty. If I have done something worthy of death, I don't refuse to die. But if I am innocent, neither you nor anyone else has a right to turn me over to these men to kill me. I appeal to Caesar. Festus conferred of his advisers and then replied, Very well, you have appealed to Caesar, and to Caesar you shall go. A few days later, King Agrippa arrived with Benice for a visit with Festus. During their stay of several days, Festus discussed Paul's case of the king. There is a prisoner here, he told him, whose case was left for me by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and other Jewish leaders gave me their side of the story and asked me to have him killed. Of course, I quickly pointed out to them that Roman law does not convict a man before he is tried. He is given the opportunity to defend himself face to face with his accusers. When they came here for the trial, I called the case the very next day and ordered Paul brought in. But the accusations made against him weren't at all what I supposed they would be. It was something about their religion, and someone called Jesus who died, but Paul insists is alive. I was perplexed as to how to decide a case of this kind and asked him whether he'd be willing to stand trial on these charges in Jerusalem. But Paul appealed to Caesar, so I ordered him back to jail and could arrange to get him to the emperor. I'd like to hear the man myself, Agrippa said, and Festus replied, You shall, tomorrow. So the next day, after the king and Bernice had arrived at the courtroom of a great pomp, accompanied by military officials and prominent men of the city, Festus ordered Paul brought in. Then Festus addressed the audience. King Agrippa and all present, he said, this is the man whose death is demanded by both the local Jews and those in Jerusalem, but in my opinion he has done nothing worthy of death. However, he appealed his case to Caesar, and I have no alternative but to send him. But what shall I write to the emperor, for there is no real charge against him? So I brought him before you all, and especially you, King Agrippa, to examine him and then tell me what to write for it doesn't seem reasonable to send a prisoner to the emperor without any charges against him. And that concludes Acts 25. When we come back, there'll be Acts 26, which will go on about Paul talking to King Agrippa. So, that'll be exciting. I hope that's been interesting for you. You can see Paul getting slowly and slowly closer uh, to Rome with every chapter. Because um, that's where God wants him to be. I apologise that this is, this particular video is a little bit late, and for XCOM being late too, because I managed to make a mistake, and I lost all my recordings. So, but it's done now. So, uh, thanks for listening, thanks for being patient, thanks for just being generally awesome. Lots of good positive adjectives, yeah. God bless everyone, take care of yourselves, I'm doing my best too, and we'll see you next time here at Complex Games.